Hi everyone, my name is King Ivy, and this is Introduction to Python Web Scraping. And in today's lesson, I'll be showing you how to loop through different pages that contain similar structure information. And this is really the one of the key powers of, of Python and web scraping in general, is that, okay, yes, in the previous lesson I showed you how to, how to get some information off of Twitter, how to get some information off of uh, one particular page, but really the power comes from applying that same logic across many pages. So that way you'll be able to actually collect a lot of information and really get the economies of scale. So if we take a look here, uh, we look at this basketball reference player website, and we want to, for example, get all the players whose last name start with E. One way of approaching it would be to find the hyper, find the href for each of these letters right here, or we could figure out the logic that applies to the URL that allows us to navigate towards these different pages. So here's the letter E. If I want to go to the players that start with R, I can just type in R here. So let's take that into consideration as we go and build and adjust our script. So we're going to be building off the script that we had built off previously in, in, the, in the second lesson. So we're going to go import string, and then we're going to go ASCII lowercase. And what we're going to do here is we're going to build a for loop. And what this importing does is it allows us to, it shows the entire, all the lowercase letters, ASCII, lowercase, A to Z, lowercase, or A to Z, depending on where you live. And what we're going to do here is we're simply just going to replace this URL information with letter instead of it being A, so it can change between the different letters. And that's all we really have to do to be able to change this from scraping one letter to scraping all 26 letters. Uh, so this is going to take about 30 seconds or so. And just as it goes through all the different tables and saves it to the basketball.csv uh, information. So this is a really powerful technique. And you'll see, sometimes you get to find the href, sometimes you can adjust the URL to, to scrape all the information that you need. So there you go, so it's complete. And you'll see here, we've scraped 4,357 uh, athletes, basketball, NBA and ABA players in about 30 seconds. So you can see how powerful and how useful that can be. But not all websites are gonna be necessarily that easy and some of them are, are much more complicated. So if we go to, for example, this one is another example of a pretty easy one. So here we're going wonderground.com and we're basically getting the daily weather data for 1985, December 31st. So you can probably already tell what are the things that we're going to change. So if we change this here to the 30th, it's going to change the, the weather that we're looking at. So basically these are all saved as different HTML pages. So we just need to be able to find it. Obviously you could send in some commands, you can use different uh, modules such as mechanize or or request to be able to to process this information on a particular website but i find uh, the simpler the better now we're going to move on to a slightly more complicated example here we're on tripadvisor.ca or .com depending on where you're from uh or any other extension and here we're looking at a particular review and you'll notice here that there are a lot of reviews on this website and there's only a couple that are showed. There's 670 links. So imagine trying to gather all this information. That'd be quite a bit to go through. So there must be a way for us to automate going through each page. So one, one approach, um, instead of changing just the URL, because it's a little bit hard to interpret, uh, would be to go here and find the next page or find this too, as, as an example and then find where the next next page is. I find the next button a little bit easier to work with just because it's more likely to be there. You don't have to figure the logic of, okay, what comes out, what's the next number after this page, even though that necessarily wouldn't be that complicated. Uh, but let's go ahead and start a new Python file. It's called tutorial three. And I'm going to copy this beginning part like I would in a 
normal script and I'll go soup is equal to make soup and then I'll put in the URL here so I'll pass through this URL to the function so it can return me soup data which I'll store in soup and then what I want to do here is I want to go link dot soup dot find in this case what I want to find is this href information and it's held in this class so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to find this particular attribute and you'll notice it's similar to when we do our div classes and I'm going to find this particular one so let's go ahead and print that link see what it looks like oh sorry I'm in the wrong we're in the wrong one You'll see here it returns us the HTML information. So, for example, if I wanted to get just the href information, I'll go ahead and run this, and it would get us the href information, which we can then use to update Beautiful Soup, update our code, and continually go to the next page. That's essentially logic of of finding that button, finding the relative link, and then creating an absolute link. So if you have any questions or comments, so really useful, pretty simple technique. Uh, can be a little bit complicated at times, but as long as you can figure the logic, uh, you'll be golden. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. If you thought this was useful, please give it a thumbs up. It's really use really helpful for me. And then don't forget to subscribe and I look forward to speaking to you next time. Thank you.